This work is focused on the correlate, uh, uh, correlation of the visual assessment of cellulose nitrate films and the molecular assessment of the same supports. Uh, so we want to understand if there is a clear uh, correlation of the visual signs of what we see in the surface of the films and what we it is happening in the film support. So when we are thinking about cellulose nitrate, we think about a material that is highly flammable with a characteristical chemical instability that results in the uh, rise of the acidity and the decay of the film support. Uh, basically, we can see that the uh, film becomes brittle, brittle and uh, sticky. But it also uh, occurs the degradation of the gelatin due to the oxidative action of the cell of the nitrate acid that is produced during the degradation process. This is a not a catalytic and irreversible process. However, we have some opposite situations where we can find cellulose nitrate, good as new, with no signs of degradation, with flexibility, transparency, and dimensional stability. Taking these aspects in consideration, we find uh, intriguing why some uh, film supports are as good as new, while others decayed severely. Um, is it because of the type of uh, composition or the film format, or because of the past enclosures, um, maybe because of the, some interventions made by the photographers like this type of masks, um, or even because they were kept on carriers? Uh, it seems that there are a lot of questions about it, but no clear an answers for, for it. And a huge amount of variables that we have to consider. So in order to understand a little bit more about the um, chemical and physical decay of the cellulose nitrate, we established a study in which the main goal is to correlate the visual signs, as I said, and the molecular assessment of the films. For that, we have selected five Portuguese uh, collections. Uh, in these collections were selected according with the past use and condition. All the films have been identified and characterized by infrared spectroscopy. A little bit more about the cellulose nitrate. Fernanda told a lot, so I'm going to be quick on this. Uh, cellulose nitrate is a, is a semi-synthetic polymer obtained by the chemical treatment of cellulose with, cellulose, uh, with uh, nitric acid and uh, sulfuric acid uh, that acted like a catalyst. Cellulose is obtained on wood or cotton. Cotton liters were preferred due to the high quality of the, the cotton material. Cellulose is a macromolecule with uh, repetitive units of an hydroglucose uh, that contain three, three hydroxyl groups that are uh, esterified and substituted by the nitrate groups here. The chemical and physical properties, like Fernanda said, um, depend on the degree of the substitution of the hydroxyl groups. So we have cellulose nitrate films that have a percentage of 11 to 12 percent of nitrogen. Uh, in order to achieve the desired chemical and mechanical properties, such as flexi flexibility and dimensional stability, plasticizers were added. Uh, Fernanda said and very well that camphor was one of them. However, in the literature also seems to be um, a reference to the use of 3-phenylphosphate as a flame retardant for uh, cellulose nitrate. In this slide, we can see a cellulose nitrate spectra. Here, in these three bands, the presence of the nitrate groups in this region for the cellulose ring and here the peak for the camphor. 
Well, the most common degradation uh, causes for the cellulose nitrate are usually, usually pointed as the high temperature, high relative humidity, uh, UV radiation, but also the biological contamination. Uh, in the literature, we also find that the uh, presence of the um, sulfates in water used for the manufacture of the films may cause uh, degradation. Three degradation steps for the mechanism are proposed. The first is the cleavage. The cleavage here of the ester group and the abstraction of the hydrogen and the formation of a radical. The second step is uh, the homolytic scission of the linkage here of the nitrate group and the formation of products of degradation such as the carbonyl and hydroxyl groups that correspond to the arising of the pH. This basically can be correlated with the two steps, the first two steps of the degradation chart. A third um, step for the degradation is a little bit more complex and propose the uh, ring disintegration as the formation depending on the acidity and also in the radicals formation. In, here, in this step we have the autocatalytic point achieved and we follow these three to five steps and get the total loss of the film. So in order to find um, these uh, uh, signs of degradation and correlate the molecular degradation of the films, we have selected five Portuguese collections. The first, the Alman Cunha Costa, is the result of an ethnographical survey done between 1935 and 1939 in Angola. It is the survey of the, of the or the documentation made in several tribes in Angola, uh, much of them to uh, do some uh, registration of the costumes and rituals for different types, uh, tribes. The collection is all in six per six uh, black and white film negatives in a total of 8,700 negatives. They were cut individually and they were put in these small albums that we can see stored. It, this collection is particularly interesting. We found some um, negative with negatives with yellow, pink, and greenish hue that we believe that are intensifications of the images performed by the photographer. It was a collection that was very well preserved overall with no signs of degradation and it was also found a diary of the photographer, uh, a very important report of what he had done in, during that period. He uh, reports that um, he was aware of the high humidity in Angola and uh, the effect of the high uh, relative humidity in the supports. So he kept all the films in metal box with calcium carbonate. And he also said that it was uh, important, the quality of the, the water for the processing of the films. So he only did the uh, processing on a restrict area that he, he said that it was Musamich in Angola, where he knew that he could rely on the, the water. So it's uh, an interesting report from a photographer that we have never seen in other collections. The second collection that we have uh, selected is uh, Direção Geral de Edifícios e Monumentos Nacionais. It is an architectural, architectural survey of the several monuments and uh, classified Portuguese heritage. Uh, it's a huge collection, a huge collection, but unfortunately the project has stopped and we have only 18,000 black and white film-based negatives described, treat, and digitalized, dig digitized, sorry, I was saying Portuguese, digitized. Um, this collection um, 
or in this uh, archive, the decision is to keep all the cellulose nitrates um, frozen. So we only had access to a restrict uh, set of negatives. From that set, we have selected uh, negatives with different uh, formats and also with different signs of degradation, what we didn't have in the previous collection. A third collection, because we needed more samples of uh, uh, larger formats, was the Sampaio collection. Sampaio was a photographer, a uh, Portuguese photographer also, that was mainly de dedicated to portrait. He worked between 1920s and 1950s, and uh, from 1700 and uh, 17,580 black negatives, uh, it was thought that they were all cellulose acetate, and there was no clue about cellulose nitrates. Uh, this collection has not been treated, so it was like uh, open a box with uh, lots of pearls and good things to dip in. So I presented you three collections. However, none of these collections had one severe degraded film, not one. So we had to look for two other collections to find, or to at, at least to have something to compare with the others that were better. We found these two collections, the Mario Nova the Horacio Novaes and the Cinemateca collections. Um, the Horacio Novaes, this one, we found uh, large format films uh, severely degraded and from the National Archive, uh, the Cinema National Archive, it, that were very, uh, generous with us, gave us this metal box with all these cinema rolls, uh, most of them severely degraded too. So, shortly, to see how we did the selection, we had five collections, Elman and Cunha, uh, and they had some difference between them, mostly in past condition and present condition. Elmano and Sampaio were visually identified as cellulose acetate by the, conservation, uh, by the conservators in the archives. Uh, Elmano and Direção Geral de Edifícios e Monumentos Nacionais have already been treated, digitized and stored in climated, climatized storing areas. From all collections, only the Elmano co uh, collection is completely reported and described. Uh, Sampaio, Mario Novaes and Cinemateca collections have not been treated or digitized. From the five collections, we have selected a total of 100, 172 uh, samples, with the color U, silver mirroring, silver fading, nitric acid, odor, stickiness and brittleness. All the film supports have been identified and characterized by infrared spectroscopy. Well, we have <coughs> treated the results from the visual assessment and also from the uh, molecular assessment. And we have seen that um, the results for the visual assessment of the collections, um, there was a high percentage of samples selected as fair, here, good, poor, and severe. A small percentage of samples classified was, uh, as very good. Um, it was uh, clearly not what we were expecting. But at the end, with uh, all the evaluation of the different levels of degradation, that's what we, we have got. However, when we treated the results from the infrared um, analysis, we saw that we have clearly a, a higher percentage of samples that are very good or good, and a smaller percentage of fair and poor. This small percentage of severe cannot be correlated with this one here, because we have only analyzed a small sample that we have taken from this group. So in conclusion, 
it seems that we found there is a poor correlation between the visual assessment and the mo molecular results that can be related to a subjective selection based on the color hue or, however, it can, there was no doubt that the negatives that have never uh, been evaluated have, as that the, sorry, that the negatives that have been uh, evaluated as very good or severe stage uh, were clearly identify. The problem is when we try to uh, it identify or uh, evaluate the negatives that are in this possible three stages of degradation. We have selected five uh, spectra um, that could represent the five stages of the degradation. And what we can see here from black to, to, to red is that the black is a spectra for a very good, uh, ne uh, evaluated very good negative, brown for good, brown no gray, brown for uh, fair, and blue for poor. We can see in this infrared spectra that in this region, the hydroxyl group region, there is a slow uh, progression of the degradation and suddenly this speeds up and we get the total loss of the film. Uh, this is obvious here also in the area where we have the degradation products such as aldehydes. We also see that there is an increasing of the peak or the band for camphor and a broadening and intensification of the peak for the cellulose ring. However, for the nitrate groups, we can see here in this area a decrease of the groups. So this means that we have the typical formation of the uh, hydroxyl groups and the loss of the nitrate groups. We have also found from the infrared results that we have 16 um, spectra that are different from the other ones. Uh, mostly in the, in the uh, green spectra here, we can see different peaks <coughs> and new bands here, a shoulder here, a new band here, two more here. It's not so clear here, but there are so two peaks more intense, and also a shoulder here. <coughs> we have not found uh, a clear answer for this. Uh, we think that it can be a plasticizer. We have checked these three uh, plasticizer, but there is not a clear match. It can be a composition, another composition, like uh, Fernanda said, maybe it can be a mixture of nitrate and acetate, we have to see. And maybe also a degradation path. However, it's different from all the other spectres that we have seen even in the degradation. So we have treated uh, quantita qualitative, uh, qualitatively all the spectres from the, the, um, the collection. However, we wanted to uh, perform a quantification of the areas of the infrared brands uh, that could give us the formation of the degradation products. That we do it by the evaluation of the broadening of the areas of the bands. And also the decreasing of the intensity of the bands that is correlated with the loss of the nitrate groups. <coughs> For that, we have applied the Gauss and Lorentz functions. Uh, we have applied the quantification for before to uh, have the same um, criteria for the evaluation of the films, uh, of the degradation, sorry. And we have selected this band, uh, nitrate band, to do the, the normalization. And for the quantification, we have used this band, this one here, and also the cellulose band. What we have found is that the um, this band here with the Lorentz uh, function give us a minor error and can give us more clues for the correlation between the 
uh, degradation signs uh, and the molecular um, results. However, these functions are time consuming since we have to apply these each functions to parts of the spectra and to each spectra uh, at each time. So we tried to find another tool that could leave us or to uh, a, an analysis of the full spectra and uh, all spectra, like this 172 spectra, in order to find variables that could uh, somehow clarify the path and give us uh, clues for the most degraded or less degraded films. So we have selected the, the principal component analysis that is uh, an exploratory analysis based on a mathematical procedure that allowed to develop and predict models based on the variables found in the results obtained in the analysis of samples. Well, the number of principal uh, components depend on the number of variables present in the sample, so it's always depending on something. We can find the results uh, in a plot that we have done. Uh, we have applied the PCA for the full spectra, but there are so many variables that we don't have a clear uh, identification of the samples. By restricting the, the, ver the, the area of the, the spectra, we have here a clear identification of the severe degraded sample, a cluster for good for samples classified as good, good, and poor. However, we have not a clear uh, result for samples classified as fair that we see in blue. Um, in order to have these results, we have to restrict the set samples for 51. That way, we, we restricted also the variables. So, in conclusion, there is not a clear correlation between the visual signs of degradation and the molecular evaluation, especially for the samples evaluated as fair. It seems that the U changes can lead us to misinterpretation and to incorrect evaluation of the degradation stage. Sorry. Stage. Um, so, the overall small for in the overall uh, collections, the small formats neg negatives revealed to be less degraded. In opposition, the cinema roll and the sheet films have more or shown more severe degradation. Uh, according with the results achieved for Elman Quinicosta collection, past conditioning and storage seem to have a great influence on the preservation of the films. And there is some work to do about the different spectra that we found, but however, we found that the PCA is a useful tool for micro-FTIR analysis, and especially when we are uh, dealing with a great amount of data and variables. For uh, the future, we think that it would be necessary to find non-destructive uh, techniques, analytical techniques, that somehow could allow us to identify and characterize film supports. Thank you for your attention.